G'day, George. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, Jim? Been a long, well, it's been a little while since we've seen each other and done an episode. I just thought I'd show the, uh, the viewers what's been going on. Right here, we have, now in our possession, we have 10 of them, but in Ottawa now are the spar caps that we had manufactured to build the center wing section. As you can see, they're brand new. I don't think anyone in the world has ever tried to, re to build Halifax upper and lower uh, spars. Anyways. What are they made out of, George? They're made out of 6061 T6 aluminum. What's that? What makes the difference about that? Well, it's an aircraft grade aluminum that's uh, fairly robust because this section, this whole center section, holds all the way to the aircraft. The front fuselage hangs off it as sort of a, as a big portion, you know, like a, a lever trying to pull it down. You've got engines hanging off it. You've got intermediate wings, outer wing panels. Everything essentially hangs off this center wing section. So it has to be very strong. And uh, with the research that we did, the formulations aren't quite the same as wartime, but it was very close. They were using 6061 and also 2024, which are different uh, formulations of aluminum. So like I said, we have these here now ready to start building the center wing section. So I understand there was a company in Alberta that uh, gave us a hand here uh, building these things and also uh, someone helped uh, transport them to your crash. Yes, correct. Sprung Shelter Corporation in Alberta. They helped us. Uh, we made, uh, they, we designed the, two, uh, the extrusion die. They made it at their cost and then had it shipped down to the United States where we bought the aluminum and then it was uh, extruded to these shapes and cut off down in the United States, which again, Sprung Shelter helped us with. They actually did everything at their cost price. They didn't charge us anything over and above. So we really appreciate it. Now we have another company that's come on board. You've heard of Merga Industries. Now we have AE Abrasives. And again, they're, uh, they're in Laval, Quebec. And this is just some of the things that they have donated to us. And uh, Chris Mercier out of Quebec which is Merga Industries. He actually took the time, he picked it up and brought it all the way out to Ottawa for me and delivered, him, delivered it himself to my uh, house. Now there's all kinds of things in here. There are grinding wheels. There are floppy disk grinding wheels. These are actually heavy duty um, aluminum oxide paper and uh, they really strip things fast without really damaging or gouging the material because that's what we need to do so that we preserve as much as we can. And here there's more, there's larger floppy disks so that we can do larger areas. So this has been quite a donation then? It has been, yes. We have these felt backed sanding discs, very fine. This is a 150 grade. Uh, they, they just stick onto an orbital sander and they just really strip things fast and with the least amount of damage. And we're doing all kinds of other things. Uh, they supplied scotch Bright so that we can, uh, you know, use uh, orbital sanders or uh, random sanders by hand, like we did on any 337. Pressure washing everything we, you know, I'm trying to amass everything here now, finally. So this has been a really big help from the AE. And uh, how, how important is it for you to uh to get people to donate things and 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 help and support the uh, help and support the project. Well, it's very important because we are starting from scratch. Down at CFB Trenton, where we rebuilt NE337, 
That's an Air Force base. They had everything down there. So anything we needed, we just requested and it was brought to us. But here, for example, I'm just going to show you these spar caps. This is actually the section right here that these are. And there's two of them and uh, they're 30 feet long put together. And that's the basis of the airplane. So these are molds that you have here. Yes. This is a mold from NA337? Yep. Uh, we, I went down to Trenton to pick it up. It was offered to us, so we grabbed it. This is actually the mold that they used for um, creating their, um, their landing gear. This is actually the shape of the landing gear truss. This is where the wheel would sit. Down here would be the oleos with the axle for the tire. Now, right now, I'm just looking at it, cleaning it up, assessing it, doing whatever repairs need to be done. The reason being is we can use this because we can make now landing gear for anyone who wants a Halifax landing gear. Let alone the fact that if our landing gear is so corroded because it is made out of magnesium and it has steel parts on it, inside it and everything, that we can't really do anything with it, we can actually make landing gear for the airplane. What, in, what is a mold made out of? Well, as you can see on this piece, the mold, they use a, a tooling gel. First they take uh, whatever part they're trying to duplicate and then they put a, a gel on here, to, uh, a, a tooling gel it's called, it's hard and it picks up exactly the shape even down to the brush stroke if it, if it was painted. Now. It's made out of, this one's made out of uh, polyester and uh, Kevlar. It has random Kevlar on the bottom here, and then it has this Kevlar mat that's been cut to strengthen it so that you can, uh, you know, make the part and extract it. So the garage is holding up to keep you, uh, keep you dry from the elements? Oh yeah, it's still standing. It looks good, doesn't it? I got another one in there in case I need it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Anyways, uh, yeah, so now the next thing is, the next step is I'm setting up a table on this side of the garage where you see everything so that I can take the trusses and, and web that's in here now that's been taken apart and put it inside the garage so that I can work on it during the winter. De-rivet everything and um, then clean it up, you know, do uh, the inhibiting and everything and uh, painting on it and put it back together, rivet it back together and then start it, uh, start to uh, the prelim preliminary drilling and laying out of the spar caps. That's my little winter project. So you were talking about the poster that Carl got made up. Yeah. If you check our other website, it's picture, I believe it's Halifax 57 Rescue Canada, you'll see progress reports. I believe the last one was progress report number 46 on what we've been doing. We've located another Halifax aircraft. It's in the Irish Sea. It's underwater, of course, but it was flown by a Canadian crew and it is truly a Canadian Halifax. Now, I believe the number of that one was LW170. So, Carl had these posters made up to help support our program that can be purchased. This one here, it is called Invincible Item. We are actually doing a sonar search. We've got it basically uh, narrowed down to about a quarter mile section of the seabed where the airplane will be. Now this is the airplane itself in its glory days. These can be purchased or we have this one and down along at the bottom are the signatures, hand signatures, and then they're not printed. Carl went around with 500 prints and got every crew member that was that has survived since the Second World War. They have each hand signed their name to 500 posters. Those can be purchased as well. But I just thought I'd show you 
that uh, you can purchase some very nice artwork from us to help support what we're doing. And like I said, all you have to do is go onto the website and find out the details. I'm not exactly sure how much they are. I know this one is $60 and that includes postage and handling. I'm not sure about the signed edition, but there are only 500 of those. Um, and that's all I'm going to have to say about that. Now I'm going to uh, just sort of, you know, I'll call it my begging session. <laughs> we need donations. We really do continue what we're doing. We have a gentleman that's come on board. We have companies now that have uh, come on board. We've, uh, as I said, Sprung Shelter, Merga, AE uh, Abrasives, Gray Tools. You know, they're starting to supply us with different things, but we still need cash. This is one way to donate. Or you can just sign up as a member with a yearly membership. Uh, I just had a call from a gentleman. Um, I'm not sure if he wants his name used yet, but uh, he's, uh, he's a strong supporter. He's made a donation, and then he called me again two days ago, and he informed me that he went out and bought, uh, purchased for us a brand new 4X rivet gun with all the snaps and virtually everything we need. All I have to do is give him a description of bucking bars. He's willing to get those. He also purchased a 100 Plecos, which are the uh, sheet metal fasteners. Uh, they're, depending on the style, they're approximately a dollar a piece or more. So he's, he's just put in $1,000 just in sheet metal fasteners. So again, I'd like to thank him for that. And uh, again, you can see the progress we're making. We're trying real hard. We're, uh, we're going to do what we can. I'm going out to the uh, Aviation Museum probably tomorrow because I went out and I bought some uh, new tarps and uh, I'm going to cover up the box wing section so that they're nice and safe for the winter because they are outside and I will be moving them one at a time to a different location so I can start extracting the um, again front spar section that has been severed and then bring it all back here and just keep on working. Okay, see you next week. I hope it, you know, was informative. But please, let those donations come in. We really need it.